Um, so, so this morning, time is, is somewhat limited, and um, as we have quite a range of, uh, of people here, I think, uh, from those quite new to the, the idea and concepts surrounding uh, Buddhist, Buddhist approach to, to education, and then some of you seem a lot more familiar, I, I think I'll, I'll just give some general principles and um, which you know, may be unusual to you or uh, maybe some kind of revision and then open it up for, for questions and answers. So I, I'm going to be speaking in English. Um, I can give a summary at the end in Thai if that, if that would be helpful. Um, I, um, I, I prefer to, or, or um, chosen to, to speak about um, religions in terms of, of families and propose the, the idea that the religions that grew up in the Middle East, the, what we call the great faiths, the monotheistic religions um, of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, um, all share common features and although their history has not been a very peaceful or harmonious one. They, they share uh, very much in common and uh, even share some of the same texts. And I think that this family of religions um, can be characterized as belief systems. And so our understanding of religion in general in the West has traditionally been one of um, religion as belief system. And um, with the um, I say, sort of arrogant Western uh, uh, attitude, we we'll say all religions are like this, all religions are like that, religion is this and religion is that, um, without considering the possibility that there might be other kinds of religions or religions that don't fit into that same um, template. Now, um, I think that the religions that grew up in India, and we're speaking, of course, particularly of, of Buddhism here, um, are not belief systems um, in the way that the monotheistic religions are. And I think the most accurate way of, of um, summarizing the, the Buddhist religion is as an education system. So it's a whole different idea of what a religion is, what a religion could be. Um, the idea is not um, one of um, creating the correct relationship between the human and the divine. And this is a human-based religion um, in which the, the goal of the religion is the um, training or the education um, in this present life of each um, of each human being, whether man or woman or from whatever race. Um, the Buddha was very clear on this point that um, we all have an equal capacity for enlightenment, but that that um, capacity will remain dormant um, unless we embark upon a comprehensive system of education. That education must cover every area of our life, um, our conduct uh, through body and speech, uh, the way we relate to family, to the community we live in, the society, the country, the world we live in, the environment we live in. Um, <clears throat> but most importantly, uh, emotional, spiritual, development. And in the inner um, development, the, um, a special regard is given for wisdom development. So of all the, the virtues um, to be developed in the Buddhist system of education, the jewel of, of, um, of that training is wisdom. And it's wisdom that ultimately leads to liberation. 
one reason for that is that the Buddha's analysis um, of, of our life is that we lack uh, true, uh, authentic understanding of ourselves and, um, and the world we live in. And that you know, a, um, a, a true education um, is one that enlightens us to or awakes us to the way things are. So one, one um, way of, of um, categorizing the Buddhist teachings is divided into two areas. One, one area is an analysis of the way things are, and the second is the practical implications and, and the responsibilities um, upon us given that analysis um, being a true one. Now, given um, the fact that, at least in my opinion, the, the teachings of the Buddha uh, provide a brilliant and accurate analysis um, of the way things are, and that the, the teachings um, concerning the education of body, speech, and mind um, are thorough, comprehensive, um, and practical, and they work, that it's always made sense to me that um, an education system, um, generally uh, for, for children, for young people, uh, should draw upon that wisdom um, that uh, the Buddha has shared with us and of course um, not uh, expecting, not hoping you to go through a, a Buddhist um, education um, to um, want to become monks and nuns and to, to leave the world, well that might happen um, uh, in very few cases, but it, it's generally um, the, the position I'm putting forward here is that the most successful um, kind of education would be one which is mapped upon, which is um, in harmony with and draws upon the, the Buddhist um, tradition of education. Um, so in, in short, um, this education is one um, dealing with the human relationship with the physical world, the human relationship with the social world. Uh, these are two uh, areas of education um, concerning how we, how we live in, in, in society, how we live in the world. And then the inner uh, development um, is one of the you know, spirit, emotional spiritual development and one is the wisdom development. And the idea is that these uh, four elements have to be developed in harness, in harmony, and it's not like one first and then another following on at a later period. So, given that framework, then the curriculum, uh, which is determined by uh, the government or for the various um, education authorities, um, can be presented within that framework. And um, it doesn't affect that, but it's, um, it's also um, this framework allows us to see areas in which um, the traditional um, methods of teaching are lacking. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples, one I think quite well known now and, and first um, made, made um, popular by or, or uh, revealed by um, in, in the book on EQ, excuse me, emotional intelligence. Is the famous cookie test where children were um, given a cookie by the teacher. So the teacher says, I'm going away for 10 minutes. These children are about four years old. Um, when I come back, you've still got the first cookie, I'll give you a second one. If you eat the first cookie, that's all you get. And they have a secret camera, and they want to see to what extent children can delay gratification, control the impulse to eat the delicious cookie straight away. And then they made the um, relevant um, records. They also gave the, the children IQ tests. 
and then um, tracked their progress through to SAT tests at 17 or 18. Um, almost zero correlation between IQ at four years old um, and academic success at 18. Very clear correlation between the ability to delay gratification um, and endure through the desire for a, for a cookie um, because you see the wisdom of waiting a few more minutes when you can have two. So um, this is making the point that impulse control, uh, patience, emotional maturity is um, probably the most um, important predictor of academic success.